This is my 12 inch bandsaw that I designed and built about two years ago. And of course I got videos here on my channel where you can watch how I did that. In my last video I talked about getting a 3D printer and in a recent email exchange with Matthias Wandel, as a joke I said I would make a bandsaw with it and he answered me saying basically that he doubts that that will work. And of course I took that as a challenge. And what I'm printing here is the upright for the upper blade guide. And I'm doing that in two pieces because the printer bed is not big enough to print the whole thing at once. However, about halfway through the print, my power flicked off and I had to start again. This also gave me the opportunity to change the infill pattern from the gyroid that I started with to the cubic, which is what this is now. I think the cubic will be a bit stronger. So as you can see, the parts look really neat and they come off the bed and they slip together in that jigsaw interlock type thing. And then I moved on to printing the other two parts that I need. That's the thrust bearing holder and the guy blocks holder. And the idea is to just reproduce the parts that I made from wood to begin with from plastic on the 3D printer. I also use this as an opportunity to get some more practice using FreeCAD. I originally drew up the bandsaw that I made from wood in SketchUp. So I drew the parts again in FreeCAD to print them here. Now here I'm gluing together the upright. I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive to do that. And I let that set overnight. Now the next day I take off the old blade guide and get the upright put on. And here I have to tap out the holes for the bolts that hold on the other two parts. And now I need to take the thrust bearing off and put it on a new holder and get that nut put on so I can get that installed. And I even went to the trouble of designing these neat little wing knobs for standard bolts and that will pop right in and then I can tighten that up. It's a little hard to turn right now because I didn't thread all the way through with the tap. But I have no doubt that this will continue to hold. And I'm using cool blocks for the guide blocks. And the way that I came up to hold those in place is very simple. Just a screw and a washer for each one. And then that adjusts back and forth with the same wing knob. And you can see it moves up and down freely and clamps tight in place. Now for the test cut. And yes, it's holding the blade perfectly steady. Any movement you see is the bandsaw itself bouncing up and down on the drawer slides that I have it mounted on. And while I was at it, I figured I would design and print a blade guard as well and get that installed and you can see how that works. So the advantage here is that I didn't have to actually build any of these parts. The printer did it for me. I had to design them, of course, but most of that work was already done. And let me tell you that making these parts in the beginning from wood took most of a full day. That actually worked out better than I thought it would. So that encouraged me to take it further. And I decided to do the table and the trunnion underneath that allows the table to tip as well. And what's printing right now is the trunnion itself. Once again, I'm going for my original design, but I drew it up again in FreeCAD. And this next part here is the cradle that holds the trunnion and also a keeper that holds the trunnion in place. And these blocks that you see here are supports that lock into the trunnion and also lock into the underside of the table because I need to print the table in four pieces because once again, the bed on the printer is not big enough. Now this turned out to be a little bit of a mistake printing the table this big. 
if I had my time back, I would have made it a little bit smaller and I would have paid more attention to the way the parts join together to make them stronger. Another fairly obvious advantage of making these parts on a 3D printer is that they don't need to be finished. Making the parts from wood is one thing, but painting them afterwards, which you pretty much have to do if you want it to last, is another. That can take a lot of time as well and also cost money. As it was, it came out in all these pieces here. The red part that I'm taking off now is the insert. And now I get to put it together and the dowels that I'm using here are actually printed from a harder plastic, PETG, as opposed to PLA. Now, I was never a big fan of super glue, but I have to say that it is absolutely the best stuff for putting these parts together. Now I get to glue in the sliding dovetail to those table supports and glue in the filler that I made to fit in there and close up the hole. But I realized after I had it done that I put it together wrong. I put it together backwards. That bevel that you see on the edge should have been facing the other way. Don't! <laughs> something like that and that puts it in the wrong place so I had to bring it out to the workshop and cut off the ends on the table saw and then cut the other side on an angle so that the blocks that I printed to fill up the rest of the space would clamp it down with that angle and you can see how that's going to work right here and I also made straps to the bottom and I made the holes so that they could be tapped out and to tap out the holes, I'm using a screw that has a notch cut in the side of it so that it will cut the threads. And yes, I know you can print threads in the hole. And I did that actually, but the screw would not screw in. And I believe tapping it out is probably the best bet anyway. Now I can take off the old table, which thankfully I didn't put any glue on, just screws. And before I take off the last piece, I want to make a mark here so I'll know where to line up the new trunnion cradle. Get that put in place and drill the holes for the screws using that as a template. I also have larger holes in this to put in 3 8 inch dowels after. And then I can get the table set on top and you can see how it swings beautifully. And then that keeper goes in there and that keeps it tight inside the cradle along with the bevel that's on the front. And with the table in place, I can put the tension back on the blade and slide in the insert. And make the first cut on the new table this is five inches of white oak and cut through it no problem. Now I'm going to go all the way up to the top and cut through the thickest material that this bandsaw will cut seven and a quarter inches. And here's where I ran into the difficulty. The blade caught on the wood and it jammed the wood right down through that insert and it broke the table. And here you can see the damage. Now I learned some important things from this. First of all, my table design wasn't strong enough. And also I upgraded my printing procedure to make the infill walls thicker so that they actually add a lot of strength. So I printed a new frame for the insert and a new insert. I also glued together the table again and clamped it overnight. And now I'm sliding in the new insert 
which actually sits down on that frame rather than wedging in there. Now I didn't replace the dowels because they were solidly glued in. So what I did was I printed a support that glues out on the edge like this. And I roughened it a little bit with sandpaper before I glued it on and clamped it in place with another clamp that I designed. I'm calling this one the lobster. Now with those repairs done and all the glue set overnight again, I can try to make the cut again. And I have to admit, I'm nervous. I don't want it to break again. But as it turns out, this was strong enough, at least for this cut. If I had to do it over again, I would take what I learned from designing these parts and I would apply it to a new table design that's a little bit smaller and certainly a lot stronger. But I'm not in any rush to do that. Now here's where I want to hear from you whether I should go further with this. Should I make more replacement parts for this bandsaw? from 3D printed parts, or should I just go back to making stuff from wood, which you subscribe to watch me do in the first place? Let me know in the comments.